Lord, welcome to another episode of At Home with the Word. I'm Minister Fitz Houston, and we have another great lesson for you today. Today is a continuation, The Power of the Resurrection, Part 2, up to the day of Pentecost. And we're talking about all the things that happened from the day of that resurrection all the way up to the day of Pentecost and all the things that happened between there. But let's uh, start with prayer first. Father God, thank you so much for this lesson, Lord. Thank you for this Bible study. And thank you for everyone who is watching right now. For we know it's no accident they turn to this study at this appointed time that they may be blessed by the information they're about to hear. In Jesus' name, amen. Yes, the power of the resurrection. Now, a lot of times, you know, a lot of people tend to think that Jesus' mission or main point was proven and ended once he was raised from the dead, went on back to heaven and said, okay, see you later, guys, I'll be back. Uh, come back a second coming. I'm done. Bye. Uh, no. <laughs> he was here a quite a bit of time after the resurrection. But a lot of people who don't really follow the word and get into it closely, because so much is made about the actual resurrection Sunday or resurrection day, they're not thinking about all the ministry he did after the resurrection. So much is talked about all the miracles he worked while he was here on earth and before the resurrection that what gets downplayed is the ministry which actually started Christianity today. That is what happened after the resurrection. Now, even several of the disciples themselves actually said all the miracles that we read in the Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, those were not even all the miracles he did while he was here on earth. And they just, and, and it's actually spoken in one of the scriptures, that these were recorded as such so that you will believe by the things that we're recording and reporting to you. But he did many more, if you can imagine that. All the things that are listed in the Bible, he did way more than that. And I think that also lets us know how much he was actually doing while he was here. Now, after he was raised from the dead, now there are actually 12 reported appearances of Jesus after the resurrection. 40 days, for 40 days after the resurrection, he ministered to his disciples in a number of ways because he wanted to prove to him now, not only that this is me, yes, I'm, I'm back like I said, not only that, but now he's actually ministering what that means to them because he's not going to stay here and hold their hand. He's now proven everything he's been teaching before the resurrection and now from the resurrection on, He's now saying, this is the message I want you to preach to the four corners of the earth. Now, of course, just to go through a few of the appearances, and the reason I say appearances is because literally after people saw him, he disappeared, literally into thin air. Now, of course, uh, the very first time he was seen was when the Marys, we had the Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James, and Salome, the tradition was after someone died to go and put spices and address the body. So they were going to the tomb to do what was customary to what you do to a dead body. Now, when they got there, the stone was rolled away. Now, this is where when you read, and it's interesting, I'm, I'm, the, the four books I need you to read uh, on your own time and meditate on, I've actually put together Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John because really... The one person who knew exactly what happened at that tomb that day in the order it happened was Mary Magdalene, uh, Mary, Mother James, or Salome, because they were the ones who were firsthand there. Remember, they came back and told the disciples, who eventually later wrote their account of what they were told. So it's interesting how each one took what happened there, uh, and, and the different places you will find that uh, for your own study. Um, Matthew chapter 28, Mark chapter 16, Luke chapter 24, and John chapter 20. Those are the four chapters of each book that describes what happened at the time of the resurrection. Uh, for example, the reason I say there are slightly different accounts, but it all, in all cases, he was resurrected. Uh, for example, uh, one book says that when the ladies got there, uh, an earthquake happened, rolled away the stone, and an angel was standing by that they saw, who told them he is risen, come in and see for yourself. Uh, another version says, when they got there, the stone was rolled away, and they immediately ran and said, somebody took our Lord, somebody took our Lord. Uh, they didn't go as into detail about what was happening inside. Two other books talk about 
uh, how when they went inside, they saw that the clothes had been stacked neatly in a different place in the tomb, which means as if Jesus got up, folded his clothes, put them down, left. So they weren't just scattered about as if he was dragged out like some people try to do because right after the resurrection, of course, the high priest and the Romans, their main goal was to try to disprove that he was resurrected. Because remember, Jesus kept saying, on the third day, this temple shall rise. Well, I'll tear the temple down, and it shall rise and rebuild again. Now, he's talking about the temple of the body. Of course, most of the times they were thinking he was talking about the actual physical temple would be torn down and built again. When he was talking about the temple being torn down was him being crucified and being rebuilt, resurrected in three days. Um, the scripture that is about when he was trying, they were trying to to disprove um, uh, his his the faith in Jesus is found in Matthew twenty eight twelve through fifteen. They spent all their time trying to come up with reasons of what happened. They actually tried to accuse the Jews of stealing the body out of the tomb so that it would look like he was resurrected because they just did not want to believe it and on top of that wanted so much to disprove that Jesus was who he said he was and so they went to great lengths but of course more word spread about his appearances which is why I believe he appears so many times because no matter how many times you try to say well no he, the body was stolen the Jews are just trying to create a hoopla about him being resurrected each time he appeared, you can believe more and more people heard about it. Now, after the four ladies had seen him, remember, they're running back. Now, let's turn to that right there, Matthew. Uh, uh, actually, let's go to Mark 16 and 9. Mark 16, Mark 16 and 9, because that would be the first place. As, as they saw the tomb rolled away, of course, they're turning to run back and and tell the disciples what what just happened. Okay, now let's turn let's turn to that uh, Matthew twenty eight. This is the description of the very first appearance of Jesus uh, when Mary Magdalene, Mary mother of James, and Salome had seen him. Okay, let's turn to that uh, Matthew twenty eight. Now this is the account where the earthquake is talked about and coming from the tomb, Jesus was found. Let's look at uh, chapter twenty eight, verse one. Early Sunday morning, as the new day was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went out to see the tomb. Suddenly there was a great earthquake, because an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and rolled aside the stone and sat on it. His face shone like lightning and his clothes as white as snow. The guards shook with fear when they saw him, and they fell into a dead faint. The angel spoke to the women, Don't be afraid, he said. I know you're looking for Jesus who was crucified. He isn't here. He has been raised from the dead just as he said would happen. Come see where his body was lying. And now go quickly tell his disciples he has been raised from the dead and he is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there. Remember, I have told you. So the women ran quickly from the tomb. They were very frightened but also filled with great joy and they rushed to find the disciples to give them the angel's message. And as they went, Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. And they ran to him, held his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Don't be afraid. Go tell my brothers to leave for Galilee, and they will see me there. That's the very first appearance of Jesus after the resurrection. Now let's go to the second one. Now, they get to the disciples. John and Peter go racing to the tomb because they just they just can't believe it. They just can't believe that she's telling the truth, or you know, they just can't believe it. <laughs> so they get there, see the same thing: empty tomb, clothes placed in a nice, neat, neat place. So once they took that all in, Mary was there with them just to cause she took them back to show them that see, I'm not telling a lie, and I'm not telling a lie. So once she's there, they leave and she starts weeping because, you know, as you can imagine. They all love Jesus so much. And now the body's gone. And just the rush of emotion took over her. So she's there weeping at the tomb as the other two disciples went on home, now taking in what they had just seen. Let's turn to uh, John 20, where it really talks about the next appearance of Jesus before Mary Magdalene. Uh, this is chapter 20. Start at verse 11. 
Now, the two disciples have just left uh, after they realized that uh, what he said in the scriptures had come to pass. Uh, Mary was standing, verse, verse 11, Mary was standing outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she stooped and looked in. She saw two white-robed angels sitting at the head and foot of the place where the body of Jesus had been laying. Why are you crying? The angels asked her. Because they've taken away my Lord, she replied. I don't know where they have put him. She glanced over her shoulder and saw someone standing behind her. It was Jesus, but she didn't recognize him. Why are you crying? Jesus asked her. Who are you looking for? She thought he was a gardener. Well, sir, she said, if you have taken him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will go get him. Mary, Jesus said. She turned toward him and exclaimed, Teacher, don't cling to me, Jesus said, for I haven't ascended to my father. But go find my brothers and tell them I am ascending to my father and your father, my God and your God. Mary Magdalene found the disciples, told them, I have seen the Lord. Then she gave them his message. That's the second appearance. So as you see, he, <laughs> Jesus kind of understands that, okay, you know what? Um, let me kind of bring it to him slowly <laughs> because it's still a lot to take in. Now, they, they saw the miracle of Lazarus being raised from the dead for several days. Now, Jesus himself is about to do exactly what he said was going to happen. Now, his next appearance... Uh, to me, it's kind of comical because in Luke chapter 24, verse 13 to 31, two of the disciples are taking a journey to Emmaus. And as they're walking along, now, Jesus, Jesus just sort of appears. Now, he doesn't appear in a way where he shocks them. Just next thing they know, somebody's walking with him. You know, like you're walking down the street and somebody just kind of joins you. Well, they didn't realize it was Jesus because the Lord kind of blocked it the fact that Jesus was walking with them. But this shows that Jesus has a sense of humor. Uh, and you can read this for yourself because I'm trying to give you all the, the backstory and then I want you to meditate on yourself. The actual verses are Luke 24, 13 through 31. Now, as they're walking along, he's asking questions about who is this you're talking about? What happened? And they're like going, man, where have you been, man? You must be the only one in the country that doesn't know what, what, what's going on and why we're sad and what they did to this man named Jesus. Don't you understand what's going on? And he's, he's kind of baiting them along with just different little questions about the situation just to see what they're actually going to say about it. And eventually at the very end, he actually tells them who he is and then he vanishes. So they get just a brief moment to understand that Jesus, it really is you. Poof. Oh, man. All right, now, I'm sure that they, at, even at that moment, they think they're seeing things. So there's, it's no accident that J Jesus keeps reappearing because each appearance gets you more and more into the reality factor that this is really him. Now, his next appearance after the two on the, on, on the road to Emmaus is accounted uh, when he appeared to the 11 disciples, actually it was 10 disciples because Thomas wasn't there. And remember, Judas went off and killed himself because of what he did. So we have 10 disciples, uh, one absent, a uh, Thomas, on the next visitation. Uh, that takes place in John 20, verse 19 and 20. Now, this is kind of why I say Jesus had a great sense of humor, just kind of like when he had with the two disciples on the road to Emmaus. Uh, let's look at verse uh, 19, chapter 20, verse 19. That evening, this, this, now, this appearance here follows uh, right after Mary Magdalene is running back after she had her appearance. So really, the, the, visit, the appearance he made for the two disciples who were on the road kind of happened between these two accounts. And then that evening, on the first day, disciples were meeting behind locked doors because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders. Remember, let me stop for a second. Their leader's gone now. This, they, they, they just saw what the religious leaders did to their leader. Jesus crucified him, beat him like a pope, they punished him, and then crucified him. So now that their leader is gone, they're not the most comfortable people in town because they're worried now, are these same things going to happen to me because of what they did to Jesus? And so now they're meeting behind the closed doors because they, they want to stay very low-key 
in case the leaders might be looking for them. But continuing on right there, uh, verse 19, suddenly Jesus was standing among them. Peace be with you, he said. Now, stop for a second. Now, I know this was, in, in, in reading this, was this was kind of a comical moment to me because think about it. You're in a room, doors locked because you're scared of the Jewish, Jewish leaders. So everything's locked up, you're inside meeting, and then all of a sudden, Jesus appears. Now, he didn't, see, Jesus didn't come in like Ghostbusters and go, poof, ah, scared by the death. But just think about it. If you're sitting in a room with 10 people, and someone says, peace be with you, who did not come through the door, they still got to have a moment of, whoa, where'd you come from? <laughs> That's just my, my imagining when he said, peace be with you. He probably said, peace be with you, like, don't freak out. <laughs> That's probably what he was talking about. Uh, peace be with you, he said, verse 20. As he spake, he held out his hand for them to see. He held out his hand and showed them his side. They were filled with joy when they saw their Lord. He spoke to them again and said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. Then he breathed on them, and they said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you refuse to forgive them, they are unforgiven. And so each time he appeared, he gave a little bit more message of what was to be done once he leaves because he wanted to understand now that he's proven who he is now this is what I need you to do because so, so can you imagine that your Bible school teacher actually is Jesus who was resurrected so so now you can understand when we look at the books of Matthew Mark Luke and John these aren't guys who are writing about a myth these are guys who are actually being taught by the original teacher Jesus Christ himself and are, are sharing in their own ways in their own wording in their own views what it meant to them to be learning from the master himself uh, so now the next appearance takes place with Thomas there because remember we we all call Thomas and Thomas had a nickname in present-day doubting Thomas because when he heard about this appearance, yeah, right, yeah, wait, yeah, Jesus, yeah, give me a break. Yeah, I'll believe it when I see him, and I put my fingers on the wounds, and I put my hand into the wound on the side, then I'll believe that's really him. So he, even though we call him doubting, you still got to remember, if the other disciples were scared to death and really fearful, they weren't the most confident either. Now, uh, Thomas was just outright bold when he said, well, I believe when I see him, I want to see him in front of me. So Jesus obliged because the next appearance happened the exact same way. Uh, right there, we can actually continue in uh, John verse 24. Uh, one of the disciples, Thomas, nicknamed the twin, was not with the others when Jesus came. They told him, we've seen the Lord, but he replied, I won't believe it unless I see the nail wounds in his hand put my fingers into them and place my hand into the wound in his side. Well, eight days after the one we just talked about, eight days, oh, we're going to continue right there, eight, uh, verse 26, eight days after the disciples were gathered again, and this time Thomas was with them. The doors were locked, but suddenly, as before, Jesus was standing among them. Peace be with you. <laughs> Probably again. Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> don't be, don't freak out. Peace be with you. Don't freak out, guys. He's trying to keep them calm because if he's trying to see, they were they were so fearful and wondering if this was a ghost, but you can't touch a ghost. So by the fact that he's there in the flesh, standing in front of them, it proves that the resurrected body can come through a, a closed door just like a spirit can. But see they were thinking it was a ghost or a spirit so each time he, he did a little bit more to prove no I'm not a ghost this is my resurrected body standing in front of you which is what happened next right here uh, eight, eight days later uh, right there verse 26 uh, right after he said peace be with you listen verse 27 I'm sorry verse 27 peace be with you then he said to Thomas put your finger here and see my hands put your hand into the wound in my side don't be faithless any longer. Believe. Thomas goes, my Lord, my God, Thomas exclaimed. <laughs> you think? Uh, then Jesus told him, you believe because you have seen me. Blessed are those who, have, who haven't seen me and believe anyway. 
And right here is the verse that I was just telling you about where John continued about more miracles being done. Right here, verse 30, John verse 30, uh, chapter 20, verse 30. Jesus, Jesus' disciples saw him do many other miraculous signs besides the ones recorded in this book. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing in him, you will have life. Now, that was the appearance to those uh, 11. And then a little bit later, uh, another time, there were seven of them fishing. He appeared to them. Uh, you want to read, th read about that? Well, that's John verse, uh, chapter 21, verses 1 through 22. Uh, basically, in a nutshell, he appeared before them while they were fishing. He was standing on the shore, and, and they see him somebody in the distance not knowing it's him of course and they're not catching anything but then he says well throw your net on the left side of the boat uh, and you'll, you'll you'll catch something and not only did they catch something they caught one of the largest caught catches they had ever caught by following his instructions now this time when they came to shore he eats with them further proving he is not a ghost a ghost does not eat. A spirit does not eat. So if he's sitting there with you, eating fish with you, that is also proving without saying it, hey, don't you guys understand? I'm flesh and blood. I've, re I've resurrected. So the reason he's doing these different things, he's, he's validating over and over again, yes, this is me. For 40 days after the resurrection, he appeared a number of times, and each time he had a lesson in teaching them what was going on. Um, uh, that was the seven there. Then then he actually told them um, now there were some other appearances uh, that I'll actually account to you that were even before the Great Commission uh, talked about in verse uh, verses uh, Matthew 28 verses 16 through 18. Uh, the next one recorded and remember these accounts are coming from four books so their order may not be in exact chronological order because each disciple was recounting the most important appearances to them and then theologians have put those appearances together to try to figure out which one happened in what order uh, but after talking with the doubting the 11 and the doubting Thomas so to speak uh, and the appearances with the seven and Matthew uh, 28 16 through 18 just before the ascension that was one but before that uh, he appeared to the twelve, including the new disciple who replaced Judah, Judas, was Matthias. He was voted to replace Judas because of his betrayal. Uh, then he appeared to 500 disciples all at one time. That's accounted in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 6. And so these appearances... Um, uh, let's look at the final one because the final one is actually accounted in Matthew 28. Matthew 28, just before the Great Commission. And each each chapter has a slight variation of the wording of the Great Commission, but all of them were about going forth and spreading the gospel. Uh, we're looking at verse uh, 16, which leads up to it. Uh, in this particular appearance, we appeared before the disciples. Then the, uh, verse 16, Then the eleven disciples left for Galilee, going to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him. But some, fell, uh, but some of them still doubted. And Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given complete authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. And be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. And that's the account of the Great Commission in Matthew. Now, shortly after that commission, now in Matthew, that's pretty much where that book ends. And like I said, some in each account, let's look at Mark 16, in each account, um, what happened right after that? Let's see. Okay, right here. Mark 16 is another part of the commission that uh, we've heard quite often as well. Uh, let's look at the version that Mark heard. Go ye, uh, this is a Mark 
chapter 16, verse 15. Go into all the world and preach the good news to everyone, everywhere. Anyone who believes and is baptized will be saved, but anyone who refuses to believe will be condemned. These signs accompany those who believe. They will cast out demons in my name. They will speak with new tongues. They will be able to handle snakes with safety, and if they drink any poisonous, anything poisonous, it won't hurt them. They will be able to place their hands on the sick and heal them. Continuing on, when the Lord had finished talking with them, he was taken up into heaven and sat down in place of honor at God's right hand. And the disciples went everywhere and preached, and the Lord worked with them, confirming what they said by many miraculous signs. Now that ends Mark's conclusion of what happened after that. Now when you look in the Acts, now these are all the things that happened with their appearance, and there are a few more appearances if you uh, go through uh, the four books, uh, but but and at First Corinthians. But after he, he had gotten through with all the lessons he was teaching them during those forty days of what he needed them to do, the book of Acts really is about him truly leaving it in their hands, because he was basically telling them, when I leave. This is what you need to do. I've, I've taught you as far as I can. I mean, if me resurrecting from the dead wasn't proving you to who I am, I don't know how to get you to believe. So really, these appearances after the resurrection were really him letting them know everything I'm telling you is true, as if it wasn't before. But now they really know because he's standing in front of them. If we turn to Acts. Um... Right, one of the one of the, one of the times um, it was recorded that he was meeting with them uh, during these forty days. Let's look at Acts chapter one, verse four. In one of these meetings, he was eating a meal with them. He told them, "Do not leave Jerusalem until the Father sends you what He promised." Remember, I have told you about this before. John baptized with water. But in just a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. I remember earlier in Matthew, he was t telling the disciples about a comforter that would be coming after he leaves, who will guide them and talk to them and, and help them know right from wrong. He'd been talking about the Holy Spirit during many of his parables in the four books. But sometimes when he's telling them stuff, you, could, you kind, of, kind of imagine they were hearing it, and trying to process it because Jesus was talking some heavy stuff as far as things that he knew was coming but might have been a little bit over their heads now in reflection now they're looking back and remembering well, he said that he said that so now it's making sense to him that everything he was telling them all while walking the earth by their side is has now come to pass and in reflection it really is blowing them away that he, uh, we better do what this man is saying to really stay in his will. So now, 10 days after ascension, now right, right there after um, uh, he said, uh, wait for the Holy Spirit. Now right after he said this whole thing about wait for the Holy Spirit, let's continue on right there at verse 6. When the apostles were with Jesus, they kept asking him, Lord, are you going to free Israel now and restore your kingdom? His reply the Father sets those dates, he replied, and they're not for you to know. But when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, you will receive power and will tell people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. It was not long after this that he was taken up into the sky while they watched and he disappeared into a cloud. As they were straining their eyes to see him, two white-robed men suddenly stood there among them. They said, Men of Galilee, why are you standing here staring at the sky? Jesus has been taken away from you into heaven, and someday, just as you saw him go, he will return. Then they went to the upstairs room of the house where they were staying. Now, the upper room, that many people call it, is where they met from time to time to, to be a mutual support for each other, and uh, to meet, meet continually for prayer along with Mary, the mother of Jesus, and several other women, and brothers of Jesus. This was something they did regularly after Jesus has, had ascended. Now, 
10 days later, in the same type of up room meeting, now the, the daily meeting of believers had grown from just the disciples to 120 people. And 100, 120 people were now praying and, and everybody on the same page of being interested in finding out more about what they need to do to follow God's directions and Jesus, what Jesus, the message Jesus said to preach. Now, during this time when you had the 100 people, 120 present, um, Peter stood up, stood up and addressed them right here. Actually, look, look at that right here. Verse 15. Now, this is when the group had now grown to 120. We're going to start at verse 16. This is the message that Peter stood up and said to them. Brothers, it was necessary for the scriptures to be fulfilled concerning Judas, who guided the temple police to arrest Jesus. This was predicted long ago by the Holy Spirit, speaking through King David. Judas was one of us chosen to share in the ministry with us. Judas bought a field with the money he received for his treachery, and falling there, he burst open, spilling out his intestines. The news of his death spread rapidly among all the people of Jerusalem, and they gave the place the Aramaic name al Kadama, which means field of blood. So now Peter expresses to them why this was all prophetic throughout the Old Testament in terms of this moment being prophesied. Now, ten days later, after the ascension, is what is known as the day of Pentecost. Pentecost, the actual word Pentecost means 50 days after the resurrection. 50, penta, penta, 50. Okay, let's look at verse, uh, chapter 2, verse 1. And this is when the actual Holy Spirit actually came upon everyone who is present. On the day of Pentecost, seven weeks after Jesus' resurrection, the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly there was a sound from heaven like a roaring of a mighty windstorm in the, in the skies above them, and it filled the house where they were meeting. Then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them, and everyone present was filled with Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. Godly Jews from many nations were living in Jerusalem at the time. When they heard the sound, they came running to see what all this was about, and they were bewildered to hear their own languages being spoken by the believers. Then they went beside themselves with wonder, How can this be? they exclaimed. These people are all from Galilee, and yet we hear them speaking the languages of the lands where we were born. And we all hear these people speaking our own languages about the wonderful things God has done. They stood there amazed and perplexed. What can this mean? They asked each other. But others in the crowd were mocking. They're drunk. That's all they said. Again, Peter stepped up to explain to the crowd who was confused what was going on. Then Peter stepped forward with the eleven other apostles and shouted to the crowd, Listen carefully, all of you. Fellow Jews, residents of Jerusalem, make no mistake about this. Some of you are saying these people are drunk. It isn't true. It's too early for that. People don't get drunk at 9 o'clock in the morning. No matter what you see this morning was predicted centuries ago by the prophet Joel, which said, In the last days God said, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. And your old men will dream dreams. In those days I will pour out my spirit upon all my servants, men and women alike. And they all will prophesy. And I will cause wonders in the heavens above. And signs on the earth below. Blood and fire and clouds of smoke. The sun will be turned into darkness and the moon will turn blood red before that great and glorious day of the Lord arrives and anyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved and so now this is where the Holy Ghost is now fallen on and, and I want you to actually read that entire chapter because that's actually when the Holy Spirit fell upon everyone who is present which is now giving them the power to go forth and not only spread the word, but also to perform many of the same miracles that Jesus did when he was walking the earth. Now, 
that actually spills over to us today. They live with the Lord. But remember, the scriptures say, these signs you can do and even greater than things than these you can do if you believe in Jesus. So I just want you to understand that the power of the resurrection was more than just him coming out the grave and ascending into heaven and saying, see you later. That we have that power within us right now. And if you're watching right now and you want to receive Jesus, just close your eyes right now and say, Father God, come into my life right now. Forgive me for the wrong I've done. Forgive me for the wrong I've been. I believe that Jesus died on the cross and was raised again from the dead for me and my sins. And from this day forward, I will not do a single thing in life or make a single decision in life without asking him for guidance first. I want Jesus to be Lord and Savior of my life. All these things I ask in Jesus' name, amen. That's the power of the resurrection. These events that I was just telling you what happened those 40 days after he was resurrected, I just want you to understand that he did a lot of teaching afterwards. He actually gave us our mission after he proved who he was so that we would know that who's telling us what we need to do is no fake prophet someone who's still in the ground, but someone who realistically was risen, had risen from the dead, walked the earth for 40 days afterwards, ministering to us, telling us what we need to do from this day forward and how to live, and then giving us the power to go forth and do those things he did in Jesus' name. Hey, look, thank you so much for tuning in to The Power of the Resurrection, Part 2, Up to the Day of Pentecost. Hey, thanks so much for tuning in to another episode of At Home with the Word, The Power of the Resurrection Part 2, Up to the Day of Pentecost, which lets us know we have that power within us every second of the day that the Lord has given us, those who believe, to go forth, spread the gospel, work miraculous signs in Jesus' name, heal the sick, and just let his light shine through us 24-7 with confidence, knowing that he is with us every step of the way. I'll see you next time at the Home with the Word with another great message. Minister Fitzhuston saying, stay strong in the Lord. God bless.